Hi guys, I'm Katie. And I'm Courtney. And we work at Dress Gallery, Kansas's Kansas favorite bridal store. Welcome back to our channel where we dive deep into the world of all things bridal. So let's, let's get go. started. Today we are going to be talking about how to pick your color palette for your bridesmaid's dresses and kind of more specifically how to do a mismatched color palette because we have a lot of brides coming in and asking about that and we love us a good mismatched color palette so how to do that successfully and even if the mismatch is in your jam we totally understand some other ideas about Indeed. how to make that super easy for both you and your bridesmaids because the mix match stuff is uh, kind of a big current trend that you're seeing on a bunch of different like wedding blogs and different um, wedding Instagram pages so yeah we're gonna kind of give you a guide on how how to do you that. can achieve that what you need to do on your part and then things that we can help you with once you're here so let's start with first things first let's jump in how do you pick your color palette Katie the wedding colors have actually gone through a little bit of an evolution from mm -hmm. you pick like two or three wedding colors and now it's kind of evolved into a, a full on palette to a, a full palette a vibe a, a theme just a all of those board. things <laughs> so the first thing to kind of think about is what seasons you want to get married in are you wanting to get married in you know spring summer fall some do winter that's not as big of a um wedding season spring and fall being the probably two biggest seasons that people get married so sometimes fall lends itself to a little bit darker and richer colors and then those summer and spring palettes kind of lend themselves to more softer pastels doesn't mean you have to necessarily stick to those but mm -hmm. that's just kind of a typical trend that people kind of try to do if you're seeing a, a bridal bouquet on an Instagram post or something like that and you really like the colors start saving all those inspos for you know just your overall for all your vendors not all just you, us yeah. your florist your deep like i mean yeah. literally everybody's going to need to kind of know mm -hmm. what your color palette is yeah. and what you're thinking because it's going to yeah. give like katie said the mood and the vibe and the tone yep. of your wedding so save different pictures um save kind of some different ideas yeah. even if they're a little bit all over the place that's okay a good vendor will be able to take all of your ideas kind of narrow it down into a yep. simple focus that's what we're here for but that just kind of gives you some ideas and like katie said don't feel overly restricted by color by seasons it's yeah. just obviously colors have a tendency to go in waves with the season yeah. just do do whatever you want kind of building on top of what Courtney said um, if you're picking out your bridal bouquet photos can influence the colors of your linens and your mm -hmm. bridesmaids dresses and in turn those things can affect some of the different florals that you choose so it really all kind of does go hand in hand since this is all in big event it all needs to go well so everything needs to be influencing everything else like i mentioned there was an evolution with color for weddings you know most people are like oh i'm doing i'm gonna do like a gray and a navy or i'm doing like an eggplant purple and a sage like don't limit yourself to those like one specific shade of yeah. two colors have an array yeah. of them of some different colors you're gonna want to have um, if you're in the summer, you might want to have more light colors and then maybe throw a dark in there for some contrast. And in the fall, you can do kind of vice versa. Oh you need some variation in those colors. You need multiple variation of colors. I honestly think five. Mm -hmm. Very, like and you can variate on different like hues and stuff of those say, colors we'll, we'll get down into a little bit but, more about how to go through color hues yes but it makes it a little bit easier to realize i'm trying to go in this range yes. of colors versus yes. these two colors very rigid so when it comes to bridesmaid dresses there are a couple of different ways that you can outfit your girls we'll go through probably like the three or four most popular to kind of help you yeah. decide what's best for you the first and i will argue the easiest option <laughs> is that you make every girl in your bridal par party wear the same dress everybody is yeah. in the exact same dress yeah. and the exact same color regardless of how many are mm -hmm. in your party everybody's in the same thing this looks great because it's uniform, it's clean, it's, clean, it's chic, it makes everybody match, especially if you find a dress that looks good on all shapes and body types. So if you're kind of thinking of, that you might want to have your girls be all in the exact same dress, our suggestion to, to you is to pick one girl and go shopping with her. The most difficult body type to fit should be the one that goes shopping with you. Yeah. Find the dress that fits her body best that we think will also complement everybody. Mm -hmm. Make it simple, make it easy, make a decision for everyone. You need to be the executive decision maker when it comes to deciding on a dress, yeah. 
especially if everybody's gonna be in the exact same dress. You need to take the lead and not let the bridesmaids decide. Because if you let the bridesmaids decide, that may fall way more into the mismatch category that you might not want. The second option is that you have all of the girls in the same color, but different styles. So everybody is- Which we see a lot of. We see this a too. lot. This is really, really popular as well. So everybody's like, okay, I want you in a particular designer and a particular color from that particular designer, but other than that, pick whatever you want. We really encourage you to give them all in one place, you know, so if you're getting them here, get them all from here. Um, and to do, if you're doing one color different dresses, we really recommend doing the same designer because they'll be from the same dye lot, mm -hmm. um, which means they're all made from the same run of fabric. So yep. there won't be any variation in color there for you. And if it's the same designer, the colors will be exactly the same. In that kind of next shift is gonna be you have all the girls in the same dress, mm -hmm. but you have them in different colors. So this yeah. is where the mismatch starts to come in. Yep. So let's say you picked a beautiful, simple spaghetti strap dress mm -hmm. that every girl is gonna wear, but you wanna kind of create a color palette. This is where it starts to become a little bit better when you rely on a vendor or a consultant to kind of help you work through what's going to, number one, look really good in photos, mm -hmm. but also you need to take into consideration this color palette and what your um, bridesmaids skin tones are. For instance, one of the most popular color palettes that we're seeing right now is very neutral. Um, there's a lot of taupe, there's yeah. a lot of ivory, it's accented with a lot of natural greenery. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong, it's beautiful. It looks so yeah. good. However, sometimes on light-skinned, fair-haired women, particularly some with a pink undertone to their skin, it's really difficult for them to wear those yeah. colors and pull them off, it washes them out. Yeah. So you just need to take into consideration the women that you're asking to stand yeah. by your side and maybe don't put them in a color that's gonna look really I'm bad not, on them. Yeah. And, I mean, and that's why we're here to help guide you through that. So in going back and thinking about your colors, that's why we say it's good to pick a general color scheme with multiple different colors and be willing to do like slight lightness and darkness of yeah. those colors because having those colors that have a little bit more of a you know brighter color to them if they're in the same general range of skin tone is going to just be super important. Yeah. So most people don't think about brides you know bridesmaids skin, brides skin yeah. and hair color and how that can make a difference. And that'll really be super important when we get to our next one which is different dresses, every curls, all the girls in different, different dresses, colors. different colors free for all free for all so don't get us wrong we <laughs> love us a good mismatch color palette it looks so good it looks unique it's it so allows, dynamic it allows every bridesmaid to really feel her best because she's yeah. wearing a dress that really accentuates her yeah so we love it it's just a lot of work which is fine yeah. you got to be prepared we're prepared yeah. as long as everybody is ready we're good to go if you're wanting to do mismatch bridesmaids dresses really take into consideration the size of your bridesmaids group and that it might take us a little more time mm -hmm. to figure out those colors. You're probably going to need to come in for a consult about just the colors, fabrics, and different styles and embellishments before, before you even bring try your dresses girls on. to come in and try anything on. So with that being said, how do you do a mismatch? Let right? us dive in. How do you do it to this? How do you get started? So the first mismatch bridesmaid like option, I guess, that we see a lot of is a monochromatic mm -hmm. ombre mismatch right mm -hmm. So basically what that means is you have your darkest color at one end, either at your maid of honor who's standing next to you or the girl who's at the farthest end, and then it gets progressively lighter or darker by shade. So that's obviously really straightforward. We mm -hmm. see it most often in probably, I would say I see it in like reds and pinks, maybe? That's what I was thinking too. Cause yeah, like going from like to, a burgundy into like a blush almost. Yeah, cause you have to keep in mind what colors you're gonna have the most of. And in bridal, there's always a lot of pinks. Mm -hmm. You could probably do blues pretty easy. Yeah, blues are pretty easy. Champagnes and neutrals. Neutrals, yeah. so your traditional, or I guess non-traditional, ombre of mismatched bridal is a really really great way to visually direct your attention to you the bride yeah. because it's essentially like an arrow of color yeah, just, just pointing following. directly yeah. to you um so it looks really really beautiful it's really really great yeah. and it's also really nice because then you can kind of talk to your bridesmaids and say hey this is my color idea where do you kind of fall on this color palette and where would you rather wear a lighter color or a darker yeah. color don't feel like you need to do the ombre you can mm -hmm. switch those around and just have it be a monochromatic mix as opposed to when they're up 
there that are yep. being in the ombre order which is, if you're having an issue with which that. Which is the perfect segue into the second yeah. option, which is essentially just a monochromatic hue yeah. mix. So essentially yeah. saying, all right, girls, I want you to pick pink. And they can pick whatever variation of pink Dusty they rose, want. Desert rose, rosewood, rose flower. Pretty much anything with the word roses in it is going to be perfect. Fine. <laughs> yeah, I want, or you know, if you decide you want somebody in blushes and somebody in a little yeah. bit of a darker, so it just essentially looks like a really great grab bag can, of beautiful colors. You can make some good, super some good easy blushes and even some champagnes and taupes, and you can have it look monochromatic y mm -hmm. without it being literally all the same color. Literally all the same color. So we really yeah. like those. It's probably the easiest of the mismatch options to yeah. decide what you're looking for. Yeah. Um the next option is mismatch every person in a different color. That's a lot. How do you do that, Katie? The problem with doing the entirely different color is the colors need to be fairly, some of them need to be fairly similar to each other. Mm -hmm. Cause otherwise, you know, when Courtney said with the ombre in that lineup, you kind of don't, your eye doesn't really know where to go. Yep. So while you can do different girls in each color, I would recommend that not being for larger groups. I'd recommend that for groups five and smaller mm -hmm. because you're gonna run out of colors at some point or you're gonna like all the colors, but one of them is gonna stand out. And that's probably the biggest problem that we find with the mismatch bridesmaids is all of these look good, but there's there's just one. There's just mm -hmm. one color, one dress that we're off. struggling to make mesh with the rest of them. Smaller groups are a lot better for the same color. Um, the only other time I've seen an entirely different color per um, bridesmaid was when they were doing jewel tones. Yes. So we had like a ruby and an emerald and an eggplant and a like a like a gold like a deep gold mm -hmm. color. Um, that's very unique and it looked very cool. So it can be done. It has to be done really carefully. carefully. But again, I still rec recommend that with some smaller groups. Agreed. And why that one works so well is because they were completely different colors. Mm -hmm. They weren't on a similar color. Palette like, at all. Like, yeah. yeah they the, the ruby or like the, the jewel tones really help yes. pop because as a as a preface, yeah, we love us Harry Potter. Like uh -huh. we love Harry Potter. But if you are not intending to have a Harry Potter yeah. wedding and you pick really bold colors that are each individual, yeah. it's really easy for two or three or even four of those colors to end up looking like the Harry Potter Hogwarts houses. Yeah. That happens more often yeah. than not, where a bride is like, okay, give me a green, give me a blue, and then let's do like maybe a yellow as an accent color. And it's like, mm, you're just missing one more and you yeah. could have the banners in the back. So it's yeah. one of those things <laughs> where um, using, I <laughs> yeah, I mean, like we said, we love that, but if that's not what you're going for, heads up. So yeah. that's why we really encourage to use yeah. color hues when it comes yeah. to mismatching colors together. instead of just like really radically opposite on the color wheel. The other ways you can make those different kind of segues into our next topic, which, which is, is our textures. My favorite, I textures love textures. And textures, we mean fabrics, we mean embellishments. This can include, you know, if you want your girls in a plain chiffon versus having it in a lace or a sequin or a beading. Or a velvet. Or a velvet mm -hmm. or tulle skirts. You can even put girls in all the same color in each totally different textures. And, and that was a cool too. mix match yep. group too. Yep. So we love us a good texture group. So what we normally encourage is if you're planning and thinking about this, so this is probably those really popular viral Pinterest photos right now that are going around where yeah. like the maid of honor is in like an all sequin dress, but then the bridesmaids are in something else. Yeah. And then one bridesmaid is in like a really cool patterned floral dress so that yeah. she acts as like an interesting accent, but then yeah. one girl has lace, but somehow it all just looks, looks like it good. works and they effort effortlessly woke up that morning and decided to be bridesmaids. When you put two dresses to to, it, they kind of, it's almost kind of like this huge massive chain of Venn diagrams. Mm -hmm. Two of these dresses need to have something in common. Like the first two, and second and third two. need to have one, yep. third and fourth, and then like fifth that connects to the first. Like mm -hmm. that's how it works and looks really well. So we you know, can get two girls are wearing the same color, but one has beaded and one is a plain chiffon. We have another set of girls. One is in, they're both in different colors, but one's in that plain chiffon. One is 
half chiffon, half beaded, and you know, you kind of and then we have a like sequin full beaded, and then she matches the maid of honor, and then you've got this yes. beautiful group of yes. five mismatched girls. So you've gone through all the trouble of like picking your color palettes, and if you want multiple different textures and variety, or if you want all the girls in the same dress, yep. and now it just kind of comes down to you, sister friend. The last kind of major final piece is you as the bride making an executive decision on what you want yep. your girls to wear. We have it's a lot of finalizing. It's, it it's a big, it's a big deal. Even if you want your girls to pick their own dress that they feel comfortable in, you need to be the one that gives their sample of your stamp of approval that yeah. says yes, please wear that to my wedding. Because mm -hmm. if you let the girls just pick anything, that leaves them with a certain amount of anxiety that you're not going to love what they chose. So you being able to make that decision and say yes, and I love this helps a whole you're bunch. Running. Picking who's getting to be in what, because um, we might even still need to make some slightly different changes to. Um, maybe a certain color mm -hmm. or a certain texture depending upon who's wearing it. Yep. So while we've got all of those things down, we've got, we know we want, you know, these, you know, three or four colors and we want these three textures and we know how we want to combine them, we might still need to switch something up, mm -hmm. um, like a certain texture changes a you know a color, just depending upon who's wearing it. So hopefully that answers some of your questions about how to do a mismatch bridesmaids group or what type of bridesmaids group you might want. If you have any questions or that we didn't answer or yes. anything specifically that you would like help, uh, leave us a comment, like on Facebook. Um, please subscribe because we would love to hear from you and we want you guys to hear from us. And yeah, basically we just we love some interaction, friends. So come be friends. And looking forward to helping you with all of your mix match bridesmaids and all of our bridesmaids. Yeah. So make sure that you stay happy, stay blessed, and come, come say yes. yes.